in this computer. Okay, let's continue. This is the second part of our lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to show to discuss uh, some of the things to finalize uh, some things on the introductory information or introductory topics of, of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And then we can show, we will show some uh, uh, application videos of some applications of AI and ML. Okay, so this was the one that we discussed. And so we are mentioning that we are, that the, the data, uh, the structure of the data, it's much more, uh, a lot closer to the real structure when you're using uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence. And so that's why machine learning is capable of discriminating uh, noise uh, uh, much more accurately compared to statistics whose the structure, whose model uh, structure is much more simplified. And because of that, it is highly vulnerable to noise. Okay, so uh, there are uh, at least in this in this time three types of machine learning tasks. So they are supervised learning, reinforcement learning, and unsupervised learning. So in this class, we will do only supervised learning. What is supervised learning? Supervised learning meaning there's a supervisor. Someone is telling that if this one is the correct answer, or this is the expected answer. And so what is your answer? like that, yeah? So we, te we tell, by building, when we build the model, we say that this is the correct answer, okay? And so now, after we build the model, then the machine learning will be able to predict uh, what kind of, for example, whether that person is, is uh, Kevin or that person is Antlemetsi based on the previous model that was given, okay? because we compare, okay, that is uh, supervised learning. For example, for uh, facial recognition, we say that this is the picture of Kevin. Kevin, you know, eating, Kevin singing, Kevin sitting down, crying, all these other things. And Kevin, you know, sideways, upside down and all these things, still Kevin, okay? So now we build also the model for Tsepo. Tsepo to be, you know, you know, the same thing, upside down, inward and outward, like that, and all these things. And then sideways. So now, so after that is supervised. So we are telling the, the machine that this is what is the correct one. That this is what it is. That is how Tepo looks, looks like, yeah? And this is what, how Kevin looks like. Now it, we give it a, a new data to say, hey, is this Kevin or Tepo, yeah? So now, Okay, if there are two classifications only, then even, you know, the one that is closer to, to for example, we, we show on Plametz's picture and say, hey, is this Kevin and Tsepo? Okay, if I was the machine learning tool, I will say, oh, that's Tsepo, because that's closer to, that picture is closer to Tsepo than Kevin. Okay. Okay, so for example, if Moses, is Moses picture, then say, whether is, is this Chepo or Kevin? Maybe I say it's Kevin, yeah? So that's what uh, supervised learning is. So reinforcement learning. What about reinforcement learning? We'll, I'll just discuss it, although you're not going to use it here, but we'll just discuss so that you'll have an idea of what it is. It learned the action to maximize payoff, okay? There is a reward and penalty system in the reinforcement learning, okay? Not much information is in the payoff signal, and payoff is often delayed. So we say that there is a payoff. So if there's not information, there's not much of information in a payoff signal. Okay. So sometimes we, when you say uh, uh, payoff and uh, reward or, or penalty, we are going to say, oh, okay, if if, if the result is uh, is is uh, is good, okay, this is what we want. So we, we gave it a reward or a payoff. But if the, if the result is not good, then we say, oh, we, do, we don't want this one. So we give it a penalty. So it is an important area. Uh, okay, well, it's an important area not covered in this course, but yes, this is, a, we reinforce, we reinforce the correct uh, information. Okay, so, and we penalize the wrong, uh, the, the wrong move 
is like you know learning making the child learn or making your let's not let, let us not do the child but the dog okay so how do the dog learn from you okay we we don't say we we don't tell the dog oh this is the right thing to do no okay what we want what do we do with the dog once he does the good thing we reward it with a, with a treat then he knows that that is what we want if he, he does something wrong then we we tell him no or we spank him or something yeah then he knows that this is not what we want okay okay what about unsupervised learning okay unsupervised learning is more of the representation of clusters or represent internal representation of data how the data are related to each other okay we don't know what is the correct information okay unsupervised nobody knows what's the correct information even the programmer doesn't know so how does the how does the machine learning know it is the relationship of the data okay for example right now we have a research that is done by my student uh, based on the, the the answers of the questionnaire yeah it is unsupervised learning about addiction addiction to alcohol marijuana and cocaine for example and so based on the answers we can say this is the group of people that are you know considered to be addicted to to marijuana like that or to addicted to cocaine and these are the answers of people who are not addicted to marijuana or cocaine like that yeah so nobody knows what's what's where is the you know what is the correct what is the correct you know procedure or what is the correct you know uh, combination of answers well well uh, if you give it to to a psychologist most likely i mean of course that their work they will able to determine it but in our case we do it a machine learning so that now we can just group them based on their answers so this group of people are addicted to marijuana and this group of people are not addicted so that's a, that's the one based on the relationship based on how the, the the questions are being answered so that's unsupervised learning we don't say that hey if you give this answer if you give this answer you're addicted if you don't give this answer you're not addicted like that there's no such thing like that so we just group the the uh, the 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 trend of the answers if the answers are this particular trend then they belong to a certain group if the answers are this particular trend then they belong to another okay so it is relationship more of the data so now we say here there's a so in machine learning there's supervised and unsupervised learning so we're just using this uh, information from the internet and so there's a third one supposed to be reinforcement learning but in this case here we're just looking at supervised and unsupervised normally classification so uh, classification and the regression regression is the estimates yeah of of certain functions and classification of course classification of you know you you classify whether you know not spam email or not spam email something like that so the, here are some of the methods that are being used so support vector machine will discuss discriminant analysis we will discuss this naive bs we will discuss nearest neighbor we won't discuss so these are some of the algorithms for machine learning for classification for regression linear regression we will discuss glm i'm not sure what glm is uh, svr support vector regression i think and gpr i'm not sure what is this so ensemble methods is combination of of many uh, of other methods ensemble meaning combination of favorably support vector machine this one is discriminative analysis naive base yeah so you get a combination not just one approach but two or more approach approaches decision trees you know and neural networks so regression estimation of functions these are the normal algorithms that are being used for clustering, clustering is uh, you cluster them, that means group them together. In some cases, it's like classification, but it's not classification. It's just clustering. You will decide what kind of classification it is. So neural network is also used, a Gaussian mixture, hidden Markov model, all this hierarchical method. NK means clustering, or C means the distances between the data. It's a relationship between the data. Okay, so as you can see here, neural networks is uh, done in unsupervised as well as supervised learning. So what else is here? Uh, hidden Markov model. Sometimes it can be also used for classification, but in this case, it is used for clustering. Okay, so normally there, these are these are the, the the 
popular uh, met, uh, popular algorithms that are being used for this kind of problems. So next, when you are given a data, you, 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 you don't use the data entirely. You separate them into three classes, okay? Or three subsets, okay? The first one is a training data, okay? This is the, this comprises majority of the data. For example, maybe 70% of the data. You use the training data is what you use to build the model, okay? So you use the build the model using 70% of the data. Now you use another uh, maybe 20%. So if you have 100, 100 points, you use 70 points to train the model. Then based on that model, you use the, the validation data, maybe 20 points. And then now after validation, you can say that now the model is correct. And so you test it with a new, da with a new data that's remaining 10%. Okay. Normally, that's just how your data is is is, uh, is is divided. You don't use uh, we don't use data uh, that was already used in the model for validation and testing. You know why? You know why? Honey, you seem fired up today. Can you use the question? Yeah, well, why, why do, normally, why do you, we don't want to use uh, the training data? Okay, for example, if you're given 100 points, okay, and we are saying that you use only 70% of that to build the model, use the training data. And the rest of them you use for validation and testing. So the question is why 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 can't we use the training data okay as the data also that we use for validation and testing validation meaning test meaning validate whether your how accurate the data is okay and then next is now you test with the new data to check you know what, what how the the model can now uh, judge based on can predict based on on this new data why why don't we want to use the training data as to use for our validation and testing? Okay. Uh, is the reason that um, the, the model all, all already have it in its memory. So it might be answering based on, okay, it, it, it has already seen this before. Yes. So you, you need something so that it doesn't refer to its memory. It actually, you can be sure that it's actually making a new decision instead of recalling yes. something that it already has. Yeah, exactly, Mopati. Yeah. So we give it a data that it has never seen before in order to really test it. Because if you give it a data that it's already seen, it knows already. You know, it, it has seen it, you know it knows the answer because it, it was used to build a model. You know? But you can use it, but it's not a real test, okay? It's a fake test. The real test is the data that was not used before, okay? That's why we separate the data and you used it to validate. To validate meaning to really test whether how, how accurate it is, whether our model is really performing very well. And then now once we validate and we're confident about it, then the test data is an, another new data. Now we say, okay. Really now, it's like the test data is like the, the real world data. Yeah, so real test data can be, you know, we need if you have to generate another work, yeah, uh, real world data, that's fine. But just to, to, to give it uh, some, you know, the small number, for example, 10% of the data, just to initial testing and see how the model works. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the idea. So always we are given some data and we use part of the data to build the model. Okay, and then we separate some data so that we can test our model based on the data that was not seen before. Okay, so now, so the approach in this class is that we use, we solve real world problem. So I want to show you these two, uh, two videos of some real world problems that we can I was doing that uh, self-driving car. Let's uh, 
copy this. Yes. Let's listen. Artificial intelligence is in a state of rapid change. Most companies that were evaluating or experimenting with AI are now using it. Machine learning has played a vital role in this advancement. So what is exactly machine learning? Machine learning is a subset of AI, which is based on algorithms that improve automatically through experience. Various industries ranging from IT, finance, media, gaming, robotics, manufacturing, have already set ML technology in practice. ML's algorithm helps them understand how the products are being used so that they can customize them according to the customer choice on a large scale. Let's take Netflix, for example. In order to recommend what you may be most interested in watching next, Netflix have deployed machine learning algorithms that associate your preferences with that of users with similar tastes. Another good example is the automotive industry, which is excelling in ML by making safe driving a reality. Nissan, Tesla, Google, and many other companies are using ML to bring novelty to their cars. Voice recognition, IoT, and high-tech camera in combination with ML are expected to make the self-driving cars a reality, where you will just sit in the car and tell it the destination. The car will find the best route and will drive you safely to the desired location. It really is remarkable what ML is expected to achieve in this sector so far. ML, however, is still in its very early states. A lot of work needs to be done. In the future, machine learning will help to build self-learning robots and machines which are expected to improve their performance without using any human involvement. In this way, the machines can make decisions based on data by using the data from the past to predict the future actions. Unimate and Sophia are examples of programmable robots. Sophia, are robots going to take our jobs? Only if you want us to. Furthermore, new robots are being designed to mimic the human brain using neural networks, AI, computer vision, and other technologies. So far, we have only seen robots that perform various tasks like humans in science fiction movies. With rapid advancements in AI and ML, that can also become a reality. Quantum computing is one such advancement which will give the quantum property of superposition, which let me just graphics, uh, forward. videos, audios, and images. ML and AI will continue to have great impact in our lives in the future. The need of the hour is to maintain high speed processing systems which will carry out ML based algorithms with high accuracy and precision free from any biases. This will make the creation of ML products a lot better, but also more fun. With the improvement of ML tools, the date model development rather than spending time on tedious production tasks. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing, ringing the bell, and enabling notifications okay, to never miss one. videos I like this. Just, I'll just run through the rest of the videos. I think this is important. Deep Learning Applications by Simply Learn. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified get ahead. In today's exciting world of composing music, image coloring, robotics, image captioning, advertising, earthquake prediction, and there's many more. It's just an exciting time to be in the field of AI, and deep learning, and artificial intelligence. Now, all these fields are just booming. It's just amazing what's going on. So let's take a quick glance at some of the things going on, and we'll start with our healthcare. When we take a look at healthcare, Deep learning is reshaping healthcare industry by delivering new possibilities to improve people's lives. And we have computer-aided disease detection. I know a number of startups have come up where they're working on, you take a picture, like if you have some kind of um, irritation or rash, and they use that, or even, you know, some infection in the eye, and they use the deep learning to help identify what it is. Hey, this is 99.99% um, 
nothing, don't worry about it. Or this is 93% chance, um, and usually it doesn't come out 93% chance if you do deep learning, but it says, hey, you, know, you should probably take this into the doctor, you know, have them take a look at it and see what it is. These are the things it could be. <laughs> Analyzing genomes, that's a big one, very uh, controversial nowadays with all the different genome editing and options they have and things they're doing. But deep learning is definitely diving into the genome projects. We have discovering new drugs and um, this there's so many directions for new drugs going on. It's like one of the booming industries, especially in the U.S., but all across the world. And they range from uh, exploring different plants and um, the opening up of, let's say, marijuana in the U.S. and a number of cities are exploring that for medical use, to how do you reprogram T cells in the human body to combat disease? There's whole industries in data analysis. Another one is chemistry. How do you use a chemical cell or a chemistry uh, molecule, not cell? a chemical molecule to imitate the T cell. So you can then put those molecules in there and then they grab the disease cells out or the cancer cells or whatever out, just like the human body would. So discovering new drugs and how to apply that is just a huge industry. All these are huge industries. And medical imaging. We'll even take a glance closer at that, but being able to analyze, you know, you get your MRI, you get your CAT scans, the doctors can spend pain. Okay. Uh, my, my major point here is just to really just uh, tell you uh, the, uh, that uh, to inspire you and also to make you realize that you're in a good position. Somehow, maybe you should have uh, started <laughs> this course <laughs> earlier <laughs> and you, have, you should have uh, you know, taken this course as, uh, as your major course. But anyway... Uh, yeah, they're like computer science people, and then a lot of other universities are concentrating more on machine learning and data science. So, because that's why a lot, a lot of work uh, is being done, uh, especially in terms of software development. So, I'm just uh, wanted to uh, scroll through this. So, you're, when you're going through Netflix and Amazon and whatever uh, movie that you watch, then they will recommend to you the next movie that you most likely like to watch. So if you are wondering why to your girlfriend, oh, how come the girl girlfriend will say, hey, how come you have advertisement for this kind of product? You know, she said, oh, no, I don't know, maybe some of my friends use it, you know, to, to search for that product, but it's actually you, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so. Uh, so there are other things in sports as well. So for them to analyze, you know, in, in what are the interesting activities that's happening in sports, you know? So, you know, they will let uh, ML decide to highlight, you know, which, which movie, which part of the, of the sports activity should be highlighted in, on the, in the news, for example. So they can also say compose, they say com uh, recognition, yeah? Recognition of voices and music. And they say they, they can also compose music nowadays. I wonder what, what it is. So anyway, so these are these are uh, uh, especially in robotics. So where's robotics here? That's closest to my heart. So yeah, Boston Dynamics is considered to be uh, the especially in terms of of legged locomotion, in terms of really the most sophisticated uh, company that is able to do uh, locomotion tasks. For example, for humanoid and for for uh, four legged animal. So. Uh, although uh, motion is uh, mo most likely uh, controlled in low-level control, in terms of guiding the motion, that's where the AI will come in. Okay, and so we can uh, we can discuss many of these things, but uh, you know, you know, I just want to give you an idea of, of of how things are useful, so that you know you'll appreciate. Even though things have become rough and difficult to to compute then you can look back to these slides and say, hey, uh, I have a lot of, uh, you know, promise if I only, if I only be able to perform this computation very well. Okay? Okay, that's the, the, this the purpose for this first meeting to give you a motivation and to make you aware of what are the things that most likely will happen if you will be able to master at least to know uh, a working, a workable skill of machine learning and AI. Okay, and that's all. Any that's questions good. that I can answer? One question. One question. Well, the, 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 maybe the reality is there's not much of those here in Botswana. 
there's not, not much of, you know, of opportunity to do, for example, Netflix and this ability to analyze the data. But, you know, you can, I mean, it's a rough road, but then you can start on, the, on your own to say, hey, I will you go talk to companies and say, can I analyze these things for you? You know, you want, to, you know, cameras, or surveillance cameras, I will analyze whether you have burglars coming in or like that, you know, the behavior of people, you know, or you can, you know, say to the clinic, the doctor, we can help you, give you a software to analyze your images whether that image, you know, help you diagnose whether it is, you know, just tell us what does a tumor looks like, yeah? And then I will run machine learning algorithm. And then we say, hey, this is not uh, cancerous and this is cancer, you know? There are many enterprising students who are doing that, especially you're still young, you can do that. Okay, and their available tools are free, free online, you know? And that's why here I'm also using Linux. I don't use I use Ubuntu. I usually I do I don't use Windows. So everything is free. All you need is a machine. The software is free. Everything is free. This is the good time for you to to do what you want. Okay. Okay. See you in the next meeting. Yeah. I will, I will give. I will upload the questions in the, in the lab. And then the, the the deadline will be next meeting just before the lab session. Okay? Okay, see you guys. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye.